Hello from Singapore, I'm Galinda. Today is April the 10th, fourth day of um, this month-long circuit breaker here in Singapore. And as you can see, it's lunchtime again. Um, I mean, I am so blessed to be in Singapore because this is absolutely a foodie paradise. And I've always been a foodie. Everyone that knows me knows how much I love food. Um, I've even declined jobs in the past because I didn't like the food in that country. So, um, well, come back to my lunch today. I have ordered lo mein, which is dried noodle. And I've ordered the version that comes with um, char siu, roasted pork, and siu nga shao ya. This is um, roasted duck and uh, braised egg. This is something that is quite um, unique to Singapore as well. You can choose braised egg and add it onto almost anything. And when I started to open uh, my delivery, I realized that um, they were very kind. They have added some um, one tons onto my delivery as well, although I didn't order them. Um, or was it by mistake? I don't know. I've ordered, the, this noodle comes in dry or um, the version with soup. I have chosen the dry version today. So there's a dark sauce um, on it and you just have to mix it and start eating. And apart from that, it comes with um, some, this is pak choy. It comes with some pak choy, just vegetables on the side, and um, super delicious. Food here is very, very cheap compared to what I'm used to in uh, London or Miami or New York, or, or even Germany. Um, and food here is so cheap, and it's so, so delicious. It's very, very unique. A lot of food here is very unique, and I hope throughout the time I'm able to introduce bit by bit um, what um, the, the uniqueness of, of the cuisines here. However, I have to admit that because of the hot weather here, I realize that I've, I'm eating a lot less than normal. <laughs> Today, on day four of the circuit breaker, this evening, Prime Minister Li Xianlong spoke to the nation once again with a very heartfelt message. Um, he explained once again why it's so important and it's necessary to put this circuit breaker in place. Um, that the anticipated increases of cases now has happened as they have predicted. Um, the outbreaks of the cases in the local dormitories that uh, host foreign workers here in, in Singapore um, is quite alarming. Um, as uh, because it, it's very difficult to to trace and almost impossible um, to trace the chain of um, spreading. PM Lee delivered a very warm message to all the family members of these foreign workers um, who are now being quarantined and not able to return to their homes in Malaysia, Indonesia, India, etc. Um, he, he did say um, that um, everything possible is done um, to ensure that um, these workers uh, in quarantine will be supplied with food and drinks and um, that they have Wi-Fi in order to, get, to keep in touch with their families at home. Uh, PM Lee also guaranteed that these foreign workers will receive adequate medical care whenever needed. Um, they will be taken care of uh, until they can rejoin their families at home. Um, I think this message is quite unique because um, from where I come from, um, the government does not uh, or has never uh, been so accommodating towards um, foreign workers. So that's a thumbs up for Singapore. Singapore is a very small island. It's hardly noticeable on the maps. Um, you really need to look for it in order to find it because it's usually just a very, very small dot on the maps that I've seen. 
Um, it's off the Malay Peninsula and is uh, 137 kilometers north from the equator. Singapore is compromised of 63 uh, islands which are separated from Malaysia by the Straits of Johor. Um, the latest estimates put Singapore's population at 5.85 million. Now, Singapore it has tropical climate. It's always summer here. No matter when you come to Singapore, it is always, always very hot and humid. Um, uh, but nearly all of the land here is habitable. Uh, the, the population is very high uh, for such a, a small surface area. The, um, in, in comparison, uh, Monaco is the only country that is more uh, densely populated in the world. Uh, Singapore ranks second um, for the population density worldwide. Uh, the majority of the population here in Singapore are Chinese. Um, to be exact, um, they consist of 74.2% of the population. Malays accounting to 13.2%, um, the second largest uh, community. And then um, Indians are also part of the minority group here, and they account for only 9.2% of the whole population. Although Singapore is a very small island, Singapore has four official languages. Um, the, four ex the four languages being Mandarin Chinese, Malay, Tamil and English. English is used as mandatory language in schools and also in main, it's the main working language on the island. The percentage of uh, migrants in Singapore's population is over 10 times the global average. Um, the top three origin countries of migrants are Malaysia, China and Indonesia, with India and Pakistan rounding it up to the top fives. Um, there are close to one million Malaysians uh, here in Singapore around 400,000 Chinese living in Singapore and 60% of the migrant population here is female um, and they're aged between 20 and 64. However, none of these migrants are refugees. Today I'd also like to talk about um, the correct way of wearing a three-ply surgical mask. Now, um, Singapore is not a stranger to me. I actually grew up here. Part of my childhood was spent in Singapore. I completed my primary school here and part of my secondary school education. Um, uh, I spent the most wonderful childhood here in Singapore and I have the most fantastic friends um, and former classmates and uh, schoolmates uh, who I am still in touch with and when I arrived um, one of my classmates contacted me and asked me whether I needed any, gla uh, any uh, masks and um, at first I said no not really um, yeah but still she um, dropped off 200 masks for me um, to use she said you know you might need it just I want you to have it so Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so the first thing you need to do before you put on a mask is, of course, to wash your hands and um, to disinfect your hands. That is the most important thing. Um, and then the surgical mask is usually, um, this is a three-ply surgical mask. It's a disposable mask. Um, it usually comes in two colors. Um, one side, let me see. One side is white, this is the white side, and I have the blue version, sometimes they come in green. I have the blue version. Um, and if you feel, there is the top part, there's one part that has a, a metal. So that part is, fa is, is facing upwards. Um, and to wear the mask, you um, put these around behind your ears. Okay, with the glasses. Um, it's not very, okay, behind your ears. And the, the metal part here, you press down 
um, to fit your the bridge of your nose, and the more import most important is that there are no no gaps here, um, and then the lower part you pull it all the way down um, around your chin. Okay, so that is the correct way of wearing the mask. And um, what you if it if it's not really fitted, what you could do is um, after you've disinfected your hand again, um, what you could do is to press the mask against your face like this so there are so it's fitted um, according to your face shape and it's it's important that, th that this part here is pulled down and um, this one here is as um, secured as possible um, along the bridge of your nose and et voila uh, and uh, to to make sure that you've, you're, you're wearing the mask correctly is you realize when you talk, you see, or when you breathe, then that is, that, is, that is a sign that you're wearing the mask correctly. Now, if the mask is too big for you, do not, some people, um, just make a cross here, just cross it and, and put it behind the ears. That is not the correct way of wearing the mask because um, the virus could enter through um, this part of the mask and that is that is not what you want that's not the reason why you're wearing it so the the best thing is um, if, if it's too big for you tie a knot here and um, and wear it behind your ears and press it towards um, your face now another important thing to to mention is also um, to dispose your mask or when you take your mask off don't just put it in your handbag or put it on the table. Um, what we what is recommended is um, to put it in a Ziploc bag. So that's what I that's what I do. Whenever I I always carry a Ziploc bag uh, with me in my handbag, and whenever I take off my mask, I would just um, slide it in there. I would just slide it in there like that, like that. This is the frozen um, edition, and zip it. So if the mask is contaminated, you will not share that con contamination with anyone else. And if you want to dispose of your mask, this is also the correct way to dispose it. My hotel accommodates the foreign workers from Malaysia who can't go home at the moment because uh, it's on lockdown. Um, they are picked up uh, every day from their employers, usually um, coming with the bus. And this is about the time when they come home. A lot of them are workers from DHL. And you see, every time you enter the hotel, uh, your temperature will be measured. And if it's uh, too high, then you need to sit on the bench to cool off before they let you back into the hotel. Delivery service is um, contact free, which means I have to come down to the hotel um, to pick up my dinner, my delivery. And I'm going to pick up my delivery now. Um, it's been put um, drop off at the concierge. And before I enter, when, before I go back into the hotel, uh, my temperature will be um, taken to make sure that I'm allowed to enter the hotel. So this is, and he will show me what my temperature is, whether it's um, acceptable or not. If not, then I would have to sit on the bench to cool off. So now I'm just going to take my dinner and go back to my room. So I'm back in my room and um, just wash my hands and sanitize my hands. This is always the first thing I do when I enter my room. Um, and I just want to share with you very briefly about a, a very sh brief encounter that I had downstairs with the concierge. Um, he was a bit curious about why I was filming, so I explained to him that um, I'm doing a video documentary um, about my stay here and he shared his, um, a, a bit of his story with me. He told me that he's from India and he runs the restaurant downstairs, or he works in the restaurant downstairs. 
and um, at the moment uh, the restaurant is closed. It was one of the first facilities that um, was shut down in the hotel. Um, so at the moment he is um, helping out at the concierge to make sure that everyone who enters the hotel um, is legitimate and um, the temperature is acceptable. So anyone who has a higher temperature would not be um, allowed to enter the hotel immediately. Um, he shared with me that um, he's from India and he can't go home at the moment, although he has uh, leave. Um, his wife and his one-year-old is in India and he misses them, which, you know, breaks my heart. Um, and the most, the beautiful thing he said was um, he won't be helping out at the concierge for very long because he has volunteered to help out at the NTUC, which is a supermarket. Supermarkets are deemed as um, essential service here. So um, that he will um, engage himself and put himself out there to um, help the people who work at the NTUC um, yes, and I think that's fantastic. That's how, that's how impressed I am of Singapore and everyone here um, pulling at the same string, and it's just um, it's 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 just impressive. So ha, uh, today my uh, dinner is uh, I order laksa today, and uh, from Toast Box, and it comes with um, Gaia toast. Um, haven't had this in a long time so I really miss it. And uh, I also ordered Bali drink. I like it. Yi mai sui, yi mi sui. Um, so what is laksa? Laksa is a spicy noodle soup. Uh, very popular in the Peranakan cuisine of Southeast Asia. And uh, this is the, the, the dry you must put the soup later inside, so they, the delivery always makes separate. Lah. So um, when the soup arrives, it's not so mushy, you know. Um, so laksa consists of a thick wheat uh, noodles or rice noodles, vermicelli, um, and it often comes with chicken, prawns, fish or fish ball. Um, the spicy soup base, this one here, um, is based on a curry coconut milk or sour asam. So this one also also got uh, tau, tau, uh, tofu in it. Huh? So very nice. Huh? So what I do now before I start is uh, to put the, the soup in there. Ah, did, I, did I show you this properly? So it has egg in there, it has prawns and um, fish. Lah. So put the soup over it. Wow, this is so fantastic. Very good. Mmm, So, this is laksa. It's, it's uh, also one very, very famous dish in Singapore. If you ever come to Singapore, you must try. If you have not had laksa, uh, Hainanese chicken rice, chili crab, you have not been to Singapore. Okay? <laughs> 